so people have defined it different ways, but in my case, I define authentic leadership as three qualities. One is self-knowledge. Secondly, is a sensitivity to the orientation of others. And I feel very strongly that self-knowledge comes first, but it cannot exist in isolation, that it has to be connected with uh, a social awareness, social responsibility, uh, uh, just a connectedness with people. And lastly, the technical skills, which we've always known are absolutely important, but you know, in our pursuit of morality, we can't ignore the need for the technical skills, uh, which range everywhere from just managerial skills to interpersonal skills, that sort of thing. Uh, so that's the way I define uh, authentic leadership and why I think it's, uh, it's absolutely essential. Um, well, again, I, I, would, uh, I think the need for moral literacy always was there, but it's been uh, heightened uh, and the need for it increased uh, by the diversity of our societies, uh, the pace of technological change, um, concerns for the environment, um, the force of globalization, the information age, and so on. Uh, even back when my early years as a principal in the late 70s, there wasn't a great deal of diversity in terms of the makeup of the classroom, and even where there was, um, there wasn't a perception that you needed to acknowledge that or accommodate it, whereas that's completely the reverse. So that um, increased in cultural diversity and a perception that we need to recognize it has increased the frequency of um, ethical dilemmas, conflicting values, which it has created the need, the desperate need for principals to have a moral literacy, to have a sensitivity to perspectives, to be able to spot moral dilemmas, to be able to identify particular values. So moral literacy was always there, but is being highlighted as a requirement of leadership now because of our contextual circumstances. Uh, I started off as a teacher and a school principal, and then I went to an academic environment. So, uh, like my approach to the study of ethics is largely one that focuses on problem solving, uh, decision making, because that is the natural environment of, of educational leadership, and that's where I began. Uh, that would be in contrast to somebody who was an academic and was a trained philosopher. So the result would be, and we, we have multiple perspectives represented at our conference, some of us are philosophers, some of us are more practitioner oriented. So the way it manifests itself would be that if, you're, if you are classically trained in philosophy, when you begin to talk about ethics, you'll be thinking about ethics with the big E, or the field, the study, the foundational subject, ethics, and chances are you'll be talking about classical Western ethics if you're from America. Uh, in contrast, if you are uh, a practitioner, you're probably more attracted to the, to the utility of ethics and moral frameworks as guides to problem solving decision making. It's a different world. We have other examples as well. We have uh, people who are, uh, have legal backgrounds and they tend to view ethics from a legal perspective. We have others who are into social justice and they view ethics from that perspective. That's creates a very rich environment for us. Um, but over the years, we've become more sensitive to the fact that we, we share an intersection and interest, but we've arrived at, the, at that point in radically different ways. So mine is a problem-solving one. And so uh, it's a no-brainer for me why moral literacy is required. It's going to help me be a better decision-maker, a better problem-solver. Okay, this is relatively new for me. Um, I'm attracted to the uh, idea of meta-values, uh, basic principles that uh, will inform a professional and guide them. So, for example, uh, best interest of students, that sort of thing. Uh, in recent years, I've, I've visited Australia and I've detected how uh, they've become really interested in sustainability as a, as a, as, they don't call it a meta value, but as a principle that seems to underlie everything. Uh, now, it's driven by concern for the environment. But the more I think about it, uh, the more we could talk about sustainable leadership as much as we talk about leadership for sustainability. And I've begun to explore that as uh, almost a filter that we can use when we're considering our practices, when we're reflecting on what it is we do, and we can ask ourselves, all right, does this practice mean, or this procedure, or this decision may solve the immediate problem, but does it have long-term implications? Is it constructive on a long-term basis? Um, a very quick example, uh, there's a very popular what was very popular concept in the plant change literature that I often cite, the notion of resistant teachers. 
principles we're supposed to are supposed to implement and one of the things you're supposed to watch for is resistant teachers. Well, there's an example of a really negative and destructive concept construct. Um, labeling somebody as resistant uh, may may allow you to dismiss their dismiss the consideration because you're trying to implement this project. But, uh, they're not going to forget. Uh, you either you either earn their resentment or you destroy their self-esteem. Uh, either way, the next time you're trying to involve them in something positive, it's not going to happen. Uh, uh, the concept of a even the concept of a turnaround school, bringing in a, a henchman to fix a school, fire people, impose the autocratic. It's naive to think that you're going to step away from that and that it's going to sustain. It will You've, des you've destroyed, uh, probably destroyed the morale and, and, and the motivation levels that uh, 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 might not have been a large supply, but whatever was there is probably gone in the name of some kind of uh, tangible outcome that you produce within 12 months. So uh, that's where I'm, where I'm getting it. And I think there are a lot of concepts that we have routinely used in leadership that we could test with that notion. Is it sustainable? Uh, or we could uh, reconsider and decide their priority or their value in terms of their contribution to sustainability as opposed to some sort of short-term goal. Uh, you can see this in the patterns of literature, in the plant change literature. Initially, the focus was on the adoption of innovations that were worthwhile, so a reading program and so on. Then they began to realize that uh, researchers and practitioners began to realize, well, you have to implement these things. You can't just provide funding and expect it to happen. So the focus began to be oriented towards implementing things. You know, how do you implement well and what are the variables to pay attention to? And after a while, they began to realize, well, the best way to do that is to motivate people and get them around projects, projects that they value. So the school improvement era came. But it was all project-based. And it wasn't too long before people realized, well, we're reinventing the wheel every time here. These are processes that we're reinventing every time we take on a new project. So uh, gradually evolved into things like transformational leadership, where we uh, start to think about the kind of conditions in schools which are conducive to renewal and, and reflection and so on. So it, it gradually it, it, it spirals around like that uh, to the point where you could generalize it to, all right, there are some practices which are sustainable to the extent that they contribute to positive environment, continual growth, uh, psychological maturity, uh, high outcomes, all the good things. Uh, instead of more short-term short goals like staying within the budget within the 12-month period. And, and again, back to where I started, the concern for the environment is one of the, one of the sharpest illustrations of why this is important. We tend to have financial uh, planning that is, looks at a year or two years, and when it comes to the environment, we tend to be thinking of 50 years or 100 years. So when you start to think about something more long-term than the importance of sustainability, um, it, it increases. Okay. All right. Great.